Hello and welcome to Music Buzz. This is Alif Alauddin and today we have a very special, special episode lined up for you. Yes. And I mean, first of all, as you said, we have a very special episode because we have a very special guest uh, with us. Uh, he's none other than uh, Joaquin Kino McWhinney, the vocalist of the band Big Mountain. We're very, very excited <laughs> to have him here in our welcome studio. Welcome to our show. Welcome Thank to you. our studio. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. You must be really, really tired. You had a long flight and a long day, <laughs> but how are you doing? I'm feeling good. I actually got a little bit of sleep. And I, I really can't believe this because, uh, not not to make you sound old, but <laughs> a lot of my teen years and early teen years, I spent listening to your music. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, uh, it I mean, right half, an hour, uh, half an hour or an hour of MTV, your song is there like two, three times. Yes. No. So your face was all over <laughs> oh, yeah. our country as well, you know, so uh, thank you so much for the music that you've given us. So we had a wonderful, wonderful memory of yes. Big Mouth. Oh. We still do. Well, it's nice to know that I've been a part of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. So, um, well, we know that you're here for a special reality show that is going on, which I'm also a part of. All right. It's uh, Sansil Divas. So, you had a grooming session with the girls and you met them. So, please tell us about how it was like. You know, it was wonderful. I, I, I got to tell them my story. And, uh, you know, and it, you know, I, as I started to tell them the story, I said, wow, you know, there's, there's a lot they're going to be able to get from this. Because uh -huh. at first you think, okay... You know, our life story, it's, it's our life story, right? Right, right? So we think it's nothing n nothing too ex exciting or I should say <laughs> lesson giving. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and as I started to make my way through it, I, I started to realize, wow, there's a lot of things that these young ladies are going to be able to pull out of this, you know. Right. And, um, and they all, you know, they were all very attentive and I'm, j I'm very excited to hear them sing tomorrow. Uh -huh. And, and, and it, we had a great time. That's great. And, you know, all these experiences that you shared with them. Now, I, I wish I was there at the grooming session yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be wonderful to know, you know, because every artist has their own experiences. And, you know, once you learn from them, there's a lot to learn there from each experience. Exactly. There, there really is, you yeah. know. And, uh, I mean, it, as, as you guys know, you're, you're in the business and uh, you, you have to, I mean, I think one of the main themes that we kept on yeah. going back to yeah, yeah. was just believing in, in that special chemistry that you right, have right. you know you can't you can't pretend you're somebody else you got to believe that uh, that special something that you got is is going to be um, is going to carry you through life right right and then uh, and then just getting back to the whole idea of staying in the game you right. know not giving up right. tenacity i mean right. you know the the you know, when we're focused and we work hard, good things happen. That's, that's true. That's true. That, that is true. So I want to talk about um, the, your start in, in, this, in this line, in music. How'd you, how, did, how did it happen? You know, it's, I, I was like I was explaining to the divas uh -huh. today, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I was really at a, a perfect place at a perfect time. Mm -hmm. You know, right. that, uh, I fell in love with reggae music as, as a teenager and decided that that was the music I wanted to play and I just became so immersed in it and I I did the whole thing became the Rasta man and grew the <laughs> dreads and all of the other habits right. that come with right. it you know and uh, and it just just kind of like everything crystallized and the timing was perfect and you know by, by the time uh, we were ready to record on major labels major labels wanted reggae bands you know oh, and, okay. and, That's um, nice. and then 1994 we had one uh, our first album was called wake up it had a regional hit off of that uh, record had a lot of airplay especially in in california right. and um by the time 1994 came around uh this the movie reality bites they yeah. had a soundtrack yeah. and yeah. the peter frampton song was in the movie yes and the director of the soundtrack he was dead set on having a reggae version of that okay. and he found you know it all any and all reggae bands that had kind of had some experience recording records. Well, we were the only one in California, and there was a couple other, uh, you know, bands around the mm -hmm. world that he... Uh, so you actually recorded the song for the movie? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. That, okay. I, I did not choose Baby, I Love Your Way. Baby, <laughs> I Love Your Way chose me. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. so, you know, and then it's... And um, it's, you know, it's just been one of those... 
very interesting. Uh, but you know, like I was telling the girls today, yeah. I said, you know, you got to take advantage of every opportunity. Yeah. You never know yeah. how big or small something could be. You right. got to go into every experience with your eyes open and ready to learn and soak in whatever whatever is necessary. And uh, and you know, there's been ups and downs. I've had some great uh, success and. Yeah. And, and have had a lot of bad luck as well, you know what I mean? But it's uh, right now things are great and reggae's big in the world and we're, yes. we're, we're traveling around a lot. And, and you know, it's, it's a good time. I mean, music uh, has gone through its kind of tough transition. I was explaining to them that the whole transition out of analog right. Right. into the digital was really a wild one because it meant that CD sales just plummeted yeah, overnight. True, true. And that was a big shock to those of us who made money selling records you right, know what i mean but right. now the, the industry is kind of finding itself out again and it's it's fun again yeah okay okay wow. so i guess we have to take a break yes. a very short break and we'll be back uh we're in conversation with kino from the wonderful band big mountain we'll be back soon <laughs> Welcome back to Music Buzz. We have Joaquin Kino McQueenie from Big Mountain here with us today in the studio. So I want to talk about the huge, uh, this long break uh, <laughs> yeah. you were in. It, was it because of this, of the massive lineup change in the band, or what was it about? You know, I mean, I, I think that I mean, um, it was a, it was fourteen years, if I'm not wrong. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, there was <laughs> you know, I mean, there was a time when. Um, we had a record deal that we right. had to record a certain amount of records, and um, you know we we all go through transitions in right. life where yeah. it, it just the, the music business became difficult uh, sure. for yeah. for me in particular for a while, and I, I just needed a change, you know, and I uh, I went back to school and I oh. finished my schooling and and I worked as a teacher for a while. Right. And uh, it kind of waited for the music business to settle down, as we were talking before. Mm -hmm. You know, there mm -hmm. was a there was a period where it was um, where it just just got it just got difficult. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. it just uh, I have kids. You know, I needed to look out uh, for their best mm -hmm. interest, of and uh, and just kind of waited for that spark and that energy. I mean, Big Mountain stayed together. We we would still get come together, and we mm -hmm. we would do shows. Here and there, uh, okay. when it was you know an opportunity we couldn't pass up, and we'd get together, we'd rehearse, and we'd go and do our thing. But um, but it was right about 2013 that I got serious about putting Big Mountain back together okay. again for okay, good, okay. and and I was ready. I was really ready to come back. I enjoyed my career as a teacher, mm -hmm. and I'd love to do it again someday. But um, but I did realize that you know what I mean. It's it, it, it's time to get back to music. I'm not going to be <laughs> yeah. able to hop around the stage for right. the rest of my life, <laughs> and I better get going uh, on this. And and it's been you know I mean it's been a it's been wonderful for me because it really has given me a different perspective. Right. Uh, be able to come back to music and, uh -huh. and understand and really appreciate it and and go and live a, a real life. Uh, for a while, it's it's not bad for anybody that's been in show business because <laughs> you realize you realize how difficult it can be out there. Yeah, you know, of I mean? course, of course. So, what about your last last album uh, that you released? Uh, Perfect Summer. Yeah. You're talking about? Uh, yeah, you know that that was an album that we put together. We released kind of our our comeback record, and uh, you know it. it um, it, the music business w can change so yeah, quickly, true. and um, you know one thing that I learned coming back uh, was just how quickly things change. And you think like even a, a, a music like reggae. Okay, well reggae is reggae, right? You know reggae can't change that much, but boy, you know it, it, <laughs> it evolved a lot. And we put together a record that we really did without. It was just kind of straight from the heart. We really didn't mm -hmm. study the industry. Right. I and. And when you're teaching, you have no time to really stay current and understand right, right. what's going on. Right. So we we kind of came in and did that record completely blind. Um, and uh, it, But, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was, it's a record that I really, really enjoy, but it didn't really connect. You know what I mean? It was kind of <laughs> like one of these things where it not until we started touring again uh -huh. and we started playing in festivals, started mm -hmm. to kind of get to know some of the young bands that were playing mm -hmm. and and some of the new styles and you know you can hear you can hear a, a kind of like a new style and say okay yeah that that sounds like something but 
until it really starts to soak into your bones, right. you know, it's hard to understand what the kids want, want you know. True. And, um, I mean, it, now, I mean, now we're like good, good five years deep in our mm -hmm. comeback. Right. And uh, just have been soaking in a lot and learning a lot about new phrasing. And, you know, it, 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 it's so interesting. I mean, it's been a lesson in itself mm -hmm. to see the way we used to rhyme Mm -hmm. and phrase right. 20 years ago as opposed to today. Mm -hmm. Kids have their own style of singing that's True. very different. You know, we're back in the day we would go, we would rhyme with the end of every line, na 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 shake, na 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 bake. Now right. it's like shake, bake, cake, you know, it's like they got <laughs> right. 10 rhymes in one, you know, in one sentence, yeah. you know. So it's... Um, it's been a it's, it's been a it's been a great learning experience. A little frustrating at times, but I think I think we're starting to get it now. Do you have any future plans with the band, or I mean, like touring, album wise? You know, uh, we're doing a lot of collaborations. I mean, oh, that kind of okay. seems like the thing to do nice. nowadays. Yes. Everybody does collaborations. Um, I'm excited to have my brother back in the band. He's he's also a singer. Um, he and I. Um, you know, we really haven't been able to do our thing. The last couple records with Big Mountain, mm -hmm. he wasn't really uh, that involved. You know, the band was kind of, the writing was on the wall and everybody knew that we were going to be kind of like taking a break and I had to kind of finish the last couple right, records right. Uh, myself. So I'm very excited about writing with him, mm -hmm. composing music um, with him. I, I, I think uh, what's nice about the way the music business is set up nowadays, you can spend more time telling a story. Okay. Social media allows you to divulge more about yourself mm -hmm. and get a little bit um, more intricate into into letting the people know who you are. Okay. Where before you, you depended on a record company to do all the marketing, right, for you. And... Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about doing more like the, the, the marketing end of it, you know what I mean? And really kind of trying to define our image a little more, tell a little bit more about the history of mm -hmm. Big Mountain. We just did, a, 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 we, we're in the process of finishing a, a small documentary okay. that talks about our last project and uh, goes a little bit into the history of Big Mountain. But I, and I want to do, do more of that. Uh, so um, I want to ask you about uh, how do you feel about your fans in Bangladesh? Uh, did you know? Did you have any idea? You know what? I I <laughs> really didn't. Um, I, you know, this region mm -hmm. we're we're starting to discover uh, now, and uh, I mean, it, it's just such a blessing to be coming and discovering this. We weren't able to really come over here like the first time around when Big Mountain was was hitting really really big, mm -hmm. and reggae, of course. Like many types of music, it, it has its ups and downs. You know, it's it times when reggae just seems to click with the world, right. and the world wants you to come out. You know, and um, and now it seems like that's that's we're back to that point, and the '90s are in. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Everybody wants to go back to the '90s now. So yeah, I mean, this has been a wonderful experience. You know, hanging out with the with the divas and the <laughs> you know, and 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 just. Uh, uh, being a part of, of uh, fortunate, you know, to be a part of this program. I'm just glad to be asked to, you know, and, and, and then getting to know a little bit about the country. Uh, not here long enough to really uh, get to know the way I would uh -huh. like to. I wish I was staying more time, and it would be, this this whole event kind of caught me right. in between a couple of things. Like like I mentioned, I got to go back and do some shows in California next week. But hopefully, this is an introduction. You know, Bangladesh, please. Bring us of back. Course, of course. Please bring We'd Big Mountain to. back. We want to come. I want to bring my whole band. I want yes. to come and play for you guys. That would be yes. a wonderful Never experience We would love that. Okay, I think it's time for another break. We're going to take a very short mm -hmm. break. Uh, viewers, you stay with us. We're here with Kino uh, from the band Big Mountain and talking about wonderful things. Uh, he's, uh, you know, giving us his insights. Yep. And learning <laughs> a lot. We're learning a lot. <laughs> so here, this is going to be the last break. Stay with us. Hello, this is Kino from the band Big Mountain, and you are watching Music Buzz. 
Welcome back to Music Buzz. I'm Rachi Kinor Shate from the band Big Mountain. Ebang Tashate Kotha Hutchilo. Well, I have this other very interesting uh, uh, thing to ask you. Basically, um, you know, you've been in the business for so long, and you, like you said, that there were struggles, like every musician from around the world. It's the same here, and even I think uh, it's a little more struggle here in Bangladesh as well. So, um, what are the certain suggestions or tips that you would like to give to? Uh, you know, the musicians around the world? Boy, you know, um, I mean, I, I think that Jamaica sort of is a wonderful example uh -huh. mm -hmm. of, there's not a whole lot of examples like Jamaica. Right. Okay. Such a small little place, yeah. a relatively obscure culture when, uh -huh. you, when you look at things and, and the way they've been able to have influence around right. the world. Mm -hmm. right. You know, if, if it, it, it really, you know, comes from this idea of just really believing in yourself, believing in your culture. If you, if you know Jamaicans, you know one thing they are is proud yeah. and very confident um, and uh, very grounded in their culture. You know, they're just, I, I think anywhere around the world is going to be sort of a blend of, you know, using outside influences but maintaining some sort of special... Uh, integrity in your own style, right, right, you know, right. and uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm getting to know Bangladesh culture, and I, you know, and I, I, I just, you know, I urge, I urge the young people to to have faith, to really, you know, um, study study their culture, study their ancestors, you know, try not to lose too much of yourself right. by getting caught up in what the rest of the world is doing. You know, we we can all get. You know, even in the United States, I mean, everywhere and around the world, I, I come from Mexican heritage. Right. We can all get caught up with this Western right. Right. dominance <laughs> right. thing, True. you know, and we know that that's a reality, Yeah. but we can't lose ourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's yeah. such a wonderful thing to say. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I want to talk about um, your, uh, your hunger about, you know, reggae music. Uh, uh, what we hear from, I mean... Uh, Baby, I love your way. That was a conventional or reggae song. Yeah. But the the other songs that we hear, like I will find a way, that wasn't really a reggae, a reggae, reggae, right? Right, right, right. So right. tell us a bit about that. You know, that's a great question because we talked. To, I talked, touched upon that as well. You know that to remember that trends. Yeah. Um, we have to be aware of trends, but we right. can't let trends stress us out. Right. Right. You know, and get too carried away trying to follow trends. Mm -hmm. We have to be aware of them and study, like everything we study, you know. When when uh, reggae music first started to get on the radio, mm -hmm. you know, in, in order to appeal to the ears of the world that were still trying to get accustomed to the reggae sound, you know, we, 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 we gave reggae that character that still blended a lot with, conventional pop and right. conventional rock right. formatted music. So it was a process of trying to make reggae sound as mainstream as possible. And now coming back, you know, uh, we were a little bit stuck. It's funny because when I was young, I wanted to just play roots reggae, you know what I mean? And I, I never shied away from pop. I, I, I've always been the guy that yeah, I'm ready to sing a love song anytime, any place, anywhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but my heart was very much into my heroes, right? My right. real rootsy fied reggae. And when we came back, it was funny because I was still stuck in the whole label mode of okay, I need to write a hit. I need to write a hit. And to me, my my definition of a hit was still a crossover type of song. Okay. Right? And what we realized is we really kind of overshot the young listeners. The young listeners, they want to hear more authentic elements right. in their reggae music. Right. Okay. Right. You know, so it's been kind of beautiful because I've, had, I've been able to sort of slow the whole thing down and say, you know what, go back to who you were. Uh, when, when you were a teenager, when you were coming right. up, mm -hmm. and when, when you were really proud and felt really comfortable doing roots, roots reggae, because that's what's in. And that's what's beautiful about, you know, music and the evolution of music. If you stay consistent in working and, and not giving up and staying immersed in the music and studying, 
you're going to have all sorts of resources to right. choose from, and that's what we're finding right now. Wonderful. And Wonderful. Okay, and uh, I think uh, we don't have much time, mm -hmm. but this question I really wanted to ask you. Uh, what do you think about, you know, the music that is, you know, releasing nowadays? The kind of music. What, do you listen to any of the current music? I have to. You have to. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a choice, you know. Yeah. If you want to keep working, you know, you got you to gotta stay. Uh, do you have any favorites to name a few? Oh, God, it's so funny. Cause <laughs> it's I have an 11-year-old daughter. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I was telling the kids about I'm, I, I, I studied as a sociologist, anthropologist. Okay. And, oh, okay. and whenever an anthropologist tries to learn about a new culture, they find themselves an informant, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the cultural mix. Right. And so the, they can tell the, the, all the ugly, right. the, the dirty part of the, you know, <laughs> all the inside story, you know. Well, my daughter, she's, she's my informant to okay. the young people of okay. today. And uh, and I, I you know I, and I'm always whenever I ask her, uh, Mija, what uh, Mija means my daughter in okay, Spanish by okay. the way. I uh, you know give me give me the goods. Who should I be listening to? She goes, Daddy, Cardi B and Drake. Cardi uh, B and Drake. <laughs> okay. So do you actually listen to them? I do. Oh, okay. I okay. do, and you know, and you know the thing is, is that you're always going to hear. People my age yeah. that are going to say, oh, you guys should have been alive in the 70s. Right? <laughs> you know, there'll never be another Eagles, you know, there'll, you know, there'll, there'll never be another true. Bob Marley, you know what I mean? It, Absolutely. Those records, they were recorded on analog tape and, you know, and it's like, it's such a broken record. Right. And I see so many people in my generation making that mistake. Right, right. And this whole idea that, oh, no, no, we should just be doing music from the heart. Well, listen. And I tell, because my brother, he, he and I, we have this yeah. argument. You know okay. what I mean? No, 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 no. He's such a purist. No, I'm going to do music from my heart. And I say, well, good thing you got me in the band, because <laughs> I'm going to be writing songs that sell. All right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a balance. Well, you know what I mean? The thing yeah. is, is that I, I, I do I do depend on the young people to, um, you know, to, to like, like we were talking about before. There's a different type of phrasing that kids want to hear. Yeah, Let's yeah. face it. I mean, we've gone through this so many times before. True, true. You know, in the 1960s, old people were sitting there saying, oh, no, back in the day, we used to have Benny Goodman. And a, yeah. a proper band was 30 guys, and everybody read music, and yeah. they were all amazing musicians, exactly. and all the kids were going, uh-huh, I want to listen to the Beatles. <laughs> right. I want to listen to four kids playing you know, standard yeah. rock setup. Yeah. Exactly. And, it, yo, you can, you know, you can talk as much as you want about, oh, that music back in the day was so much better than this. Well, listen, we just keep on going through it. It's yeah. the same old broken record. Exactly. And exactly. no matter what, you know, you can, you can try to say, oh, God, but the songwriting in the 70s, you know, it's just never going to, you know, today's music's never going to compare. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's the <laughs> same old story. Yeah, it's the same old story. Yeah, I agree there. Even though we are big fans of the 70s and 80s yeah. too, but <laughs> yeah, too. absolutely, but absolutely agree with what you're saying. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And, and how can you, you know, help? I mean, I think that one thing I do tell kids is I say, you know, back in the day, we're never going to have that period ever again yeah. where right. where record companies spent so much money nurturing right. groups, right? And they were bands, and they had money. And to invest in bands, the bands didn't have to make it. They they saw talent, and they would nurture talent. And yeah, you know, you like you know, I go, I keep, I don't know why I keep on going back to the Eagles, <laughs> you know, but they were kind of one of the quintessential examples mm -hmm. of a rock band that just started to write these amazing songs right. and had time and money to really create these masterpieces, right. which, you know, nowadays, of course, you know, it's a lot of cutting and pasting and, you know, let's, yeah. get, <laughs> let's get this yeah. and put it over here and this over here, you Makes know what I mean? matches yeah. and whatnot. Which, you know, it's it's just a whole different process. It is. It is. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, the tones, the recording True. process. True. Everything has changed. So much has changed, and uh, but it's it, it, we're never going to get that back because it doesn't make sense to record 
that way <laughs> anymore. It just of doesn't course. make any sense. Of course. <laughs> totally agree with you. And Amra Prashi Shadika Jolashi at the end of our show. So it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you so it was much for all your time. You in our studio. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Okay, so let's close the show. I hope you enjoyed uh, the show because on Ekshundur Shundur Kothar Mashunlam from Kino. So this is goodbye. So we'll see you next week. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.